and Christian. <laughs> oh, derp. Oh, derp. Did you do an oh, derp last time? I don't think you did. <laughs> and no, Ju- did. Justin's still here. What I up, did the Jared? intro, so I, it's hard for me to. You got to like, do be your like, oh, I'm with my pals. Oh, derp. <laughs> and uh, here's, here's Joe and Vito and Justin. I get too I get too concentrated. Listeners, in if you have catchphrases for Vito and I, let us know. I mean, my catch. I'm gonna change my catchphrase. You can't. It's from. been 30 episodes of a <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a bit. Wait, it's true. Derp. <laughs> We're joined here with Justin again. I said yeah. that already. Yeah, yeah, we, oh, okay. we covered that. You're too right. busy covered. laughing at your own oh derp. So <laughs> <laughs> Derping it up. All right, so Christian, you had you posted a question in the Facebook group. Let's get into it. I did. Oh, we're gonna get right into it. So the question is, let me let me actually pull it up. So I gotta tell you guys, uh, now that I'm like a professional teacher, and my job involves computers, there's a lot of times where like the thing I'm trying to do doesn't work, so I have to fill dead air, and my experience from podcasting has helped a whole lot. So like like I said, I drop my mic pack all the time when I'm supposed to be recording things. So I don't want to be like teaching lessons when I'm not being recorded. So I'll just talk about nonsense for 30 seconds while I walk over to the new batteries and change the batteries and all that and fix my mic, you know. So the question that I had on Facebook. So is there an artist that you refuse to listen to because of something that they did and or their personal beliefs? And do you have an issue with folks listening to certain artists? So, well, I mean, just to get... Just really a quick down. nope and nope. Just yeah, just to, <laughs> so, just to really get down to it. Do you want to expand this topic beyond music to media in general? Sure, or we just sure, that's music? fine. We can do that. I mean, it, it can be music. I just said artist. So anybody that's like an entertainer. Like, I refuse to see Ender's Game because Orson Scott Card is such a shithead. But um, I, I don't know who that is. He's but. the author of Ender's Game. Oh okay. <laughs> I don't read books. <laughs> yeah, I know you're a fake nerd. Uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, frat nerd. Yeah. 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 A, d- a fucking. I feel, so I feel like Christian's a frat nerd, Joe's the real nerd, and I'm the in between. <laughs> you're the, the, you're the metal nerd. nerd, man. You're the fantasy the nerd, fantasy the power nerd, metal yeah. nerd. <laughs> you're like the MMO. Where it's like when you hear fucking bands like, you know, Dragon Force, Vito's first in mind. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like yeah. fantasy yeah. shit, where it's talking yeah. about like yeah. roaming the fucking. Forest Fucking lands and shit. You know, you know, like, th- but this is like that's like a thing. Like Danzig's been dropping Walk anime references into Misfit songs for years. Armor. I mean, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of fire, and we gotta fight a dragon, and then it's like fucking super fast, like a lot of kick drum, like a lot of double bass yeah. and shit. Everybody, everybody knows fucking <laughs> a lot Ze- of synth. Zeppelin loves Lord of the Rings, you know. <laughs> so it's like you know. Uh, Okay, anyway, back to the question. <laughs> I'm going to get diverted here and start talking about shit. So the question. Talking about wizard rock? And this here? is because I've been, I've been, you know, there's a very, very, very great video on the internet right now. I think it's personally my favorite video on the internet ever. And it's R. Kelly performing live in... Ethiopia. Are you talking about the one where he's talking about bringing... bringing Did you get your passport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Did you get your shots? Girl, do you want to come home with Rob to America? (laughs) Yeah. It's like, fuck, dude. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It's the greatest video I've ever seen. But it makes you think that, yeah, he he was literally trying to, like, lure people back here to, like... (laughs) Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they brought what was it, eleven counts up, and then they just brought eleven more up the other day. Yeah. yeah he he likes got, to date rape teenage girls, man. He just got <laughs> slapped with that shit. But do I support him? No. Do I, I agree with him? No. But is he a good singer? And do I love? I his mean, old he's music? he's an he's an objectively yes. talented vocalist, right? Like, he's like you know, I mean, an objectively talented individual, mm-hmm. right? Like, you can't really argue that. He's a very specific lyricist, too. Yeah. 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 But, like, let's be real. Since these charges have been brought up, and these are probably going to hold weight, and they're probably going to put him in prison for a really long time, right? I mean, that's probably what's going to happen. Oh, yeah, no doubt. 22 counts of sexual assault and whatever else. He's dead broke. Yeah, yeah. Dead broke. Mm -hmm. So after all of this, and after all this stuff has come to light, and, like, all this shit, like, I can't listen to his old music. Yeah. Like, let's be real. Let's think about, like, the the first quarter of the first verse from, or the, the first, cor- just the chorus of Bump and Grind. Yeah. Right? You cannot listen to that song without, without it being thinking. really cringy now. Right? Yeah. Really? Like, 
right? Or, or the very opening line, my mind's telling me no, but my body's telling me yes, <laughs> yeah. right? That's yeah. some really now, that's like fucking, in, 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 what we know yeah, now, that's yeah. some really rapey shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dogs no, are fuck R. Kelly. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to listen to his music, like but am I going to, like, hate on somebody yeah. for listening to your music? I might, like, scoff at you and call you a fucking idiot, right? But that's going to be, like, the end of the conversation. I'm not going to, like... But does does that change with time, though, you know? Because, like, yeah, you can, like it's separating the artist from the art, you know? Like, I mean, Walt Disney was a straight-up eugenicist, but people still love Disney shit, you know? So... You know, well, yeah, Walt Disney was a real piece of shit. Yeah. But am I going yeah. to go to Disneyland every summer with my girlfriend? Disneyland is objectively amazing. Hold on. We're going to leave Disneyland <laughs> out of this. But like, you can't <laughs> fuck with Disneyland. Like, forget what the comment, like, like Disneyland is its own thing. But do it we really still is. judge Disney for the sins of Walt Disney? Like, they own no. Marvel and Star Wars now, so. They own everything. Right, right, but, they but, literally but, own but, but the, sins of, the sins of Walt Disney were, I mean, right? The dude's been on ice for however long. That's what I'm saying. So does, like, you does know what this I mean? shit change But that's what I'm saying. So that, like, like, but, but shit that he made was, was racist. Yeah. Like, look at the old Mickey Mouse cartoons. Songs of the South, right? Dude, you know, like, know. like the stuff he made is. I don't watch that shit, nor would I watch that shit. Or like, yeah. should, I think anybody should watch that shit. Right. But anything that's made post Disney being on ice, I think isn't. Well, but what about then? What about like Snow White, for example? The dogs are going effing crazy. Yeah, the dogs. Yeah, are going the dogs crazy. are on our end. The dogs have a lot of thoughts about. R. Kelly and Walt Disney going yeah, on right apparently. now. Yeah, apparently. Um, All right, they've calmed down. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, it's... Yeah, you know, and that makes sense. But, it's I mean, all, all... I mean... So yeah, like, I don't know. It's kind of like a weird gray area. How much... Inf- I mean... It's a gray area, for sure. 100%. The, the yeah. story's kind of weird, too. I mean, you're talking about, like, you know, some chick... get it Again, get some girl getting kissed in her sleep yeah. by some dude. It's well, it's still, way creepier. The original fairy tale is way creepier. It well, wasn't right, kissing, right, 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 right. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, like you know, the, we're you know we're talking Disney here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so like it's still pretty. Like I don't know. Like a lot of those older dingy Disney movies are pretty cringy. Yeah. You know, sure. like, and I don't. You know, like I love Lion King and I love Aladdin yeah. and I love these movies that I grew up I mean, with that came out when I was a kid and, and I like a lot of the older stuff too, but. But a lot of it's pretty cringy. I'm yeah. going through this right now because Ara, our, our, uh, my fiance, hates hates Disney, hates hates oh. hates them because of all that. Like, I'm too. She says I'm too woke for Disney, and oh. you know she's <laughs> like she has Jewish family, so it's very the anti-Semitism. Like she can't get past it. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, okay, but like Walt Disney hasn't been a part of this for like years. So like, can you really judge his sins for Aladdin? But then she's like, but like look at Jafar. I mean, he looks. Jewish. He's the most Jewish looking character in that whole movie, and he's the bad guy. Like, Does he? Yes. He has a very Jewish nose. <laughs> See, yeah, but, just... but 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 no. Middle Eastern Arabian men have they noses have, they like have that yeah, all the time. Aladdin yeah. looks like a white guy. And so does Jasmine. They but don't look see, nearly Jasmine as Jewish. Jasmine doesn't look like a white girl. Come on. She looks like a white in girl the cartoon? with a tan. She, 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 looks, she looks more Indian, so I, I think, think than, than she may, than than she may be like Middle Eastern. Than yeah. yeah. But, but like... There's plenty of Middle Eastern men walking around that look very similar to Jafar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sure. But I mean, like, let's really get down to it. Like, like, Jewish and Middle Eastern, there's not a whole lot of difference. No, I, especially, yeah, I know. I know right? But... Let's, be, let's be real. Like, that's, you know. It's a gray area. Yeah, it's kind of a I'm weird. Play, like... I mean, I'm playing a lot of Kingdom Hearts, and she always reminds me, like, you know, I really hate Disney. I'm like, I know, babe. Because it's like, it's, it's that zone. Yeah, that would get like... annoying. I would get kind of mad. <laughs> yeah. I, I would. Like my my girlfriend's kind of like that. Like she's she's kind of like she gets kind of passionate. I guess I'm gonna be yeah. try to be polite in case she wants to listen to this. Um, <laughs> passionate about things, and sometimes it can be a little much. But like you know, like after a while, I just stop listening, and she knows it. I hear the same. She says the same thing to other people. It's like a metronome. Yeah. You, like you listen yeah. to it for like the first ten, fifteen seconds, and then and it's then it's gone. just kind of there. It's gone. Yeah. Especially if but I'm, you know, if I can keep her off of politics and like like race relations, I like fucking hate things. Like I want I want I want to come back to your girlfriend because I hear the way you met was pretty awesome, and we need yeah, to talk. Yeah. About we will. It. We but that's yeah. we will talk about to that. answer the question you posed. The only artists, well, besides Orson Scott Card, who whose stuff I really can't support, that I used to like and don't anymore, it would be Michael Jackson and uh, R. Kelly. 
Right I can't now. give up both Michael Jackson or R. Kelly. See, we took all the, the Michael Jackson out good. of our wedding playlist because we just can't get past it. Like, but do the is, sins? Do the sins of old creepy white Michael affect young black Michael? Well, that's the question. That's but the thing like, is, he's the same because dude. I love me some and Jackson Will, Five. Yeah, and I love me some Will Mike. You know what I mean? Like young, like twenties, like the eighty. Like I mean, like the eighties, like the early eighties, yeah. like before shit got weird mm-hmm. in the late eighties and early nineties. Yeah, you know. I mean, Aura and I settled on all of it. She loves, uh, what's that? Oh, my God. The one Jackson 5 song. <sighs> Why can I not think of it? Anyway, she's obsessed with the one Jackson 5 song. We're just taking it off. Just It's too raw right now. But will that change 20 years from now? Who can say? Who can but the say? thing that I have with Michael Jackson is, how. I mean, I understand that it's a really sensitive subject. It's like very, very, very sensitive subject. And I'm not one... To quickly say, I don't want to believe these people for their documentary. The problem is there's two sides of the story here. There's two sides. And unfortunately, Michael Jackson is worm food right now and can't fucking have his side of the story. Which he did back in when, you know, when it was starting to the go on. The man was acquitted twice. Yeah. And so it's like, he had his, he twice. had his time, but then he dies and then. Right, I mean, ten like, years down the road, they bring it back up it. like it's gonna change. I feel like I feel like assaulting a man after he's dead. It's, it's a low blow. Do any good. Good. That's I mean, a low blow, and you know I think I mean? that's why when like, I watched it, I was like, "It's really what it is." They took advantage of him being being dead. deceased, and 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 you gotta you gotta watch the documentary, man. I, I mean, I'm it. sure that crazy. I'll get around to it. I'm just like, it's gonna take me a minute. Crazy. I watched like, it, and it's fucking foul, man. It's, it's yeah, really foul. The shit that they said is really fucked up. That's rough. But the problem is, is you never know. Because there's yeah, I don't know. two I sides, there. there's not, two I'm sides not. of the story, and there's the people, you know, there's the people who do know Michael Jackson personally who are defending him, and then you have a whole group of people who know Michael Jackson but and who are attacking him. It's like I so think it's it was like Dave Chappelle who was like, "Did we not know, or have we really known about this for years, and we've just been pretending we didn't know?" All right, like it, it, it's really like, dude, he's dead. I get it. You can do your documentary, but to act like it's going to change anything, get the fuck out of here, dude. Michael Jackson's dead. You're not going to you're not going to turn him yeah, over. It's in not his like grave. it's not like with R. Kelly. Like you're bringing something to light, and this dude can he can go to prison for it. He can or, pay for his punishment. Or, you know, like some kind of justice can be served. The man's dead. Yeah, leave him alone. What are they going to do? Dig him up and put him you know in jail? What I mean, regardless of who they am, like like talking about talk. I mean, like. I don't know, like dragging dragging a deceased man's name through the dirt, regardless of whether or not it's accurate or or true. Like he's dead. What are you doing? You're not. Well, doing and my biggest like, problem with it is, it's all about money. For it who? Really, is about money. For who? You think the people that made that movie didn't make a bunch of money off it? The people who made the movie, I made have no idea. Made the documentary. Made the HBO, they, made they probably didn't make that much money. Stacks from that. You know they did. Because yeah, now, now they're going to get now they're going to get book that. deals. Now they're going to get everything. They have their documentary on I mean, one I don't of the know. biggest I don't really streaming have an opinion platforms. On it one way or another, I think it, but I just don't see the point. And there's no point in it. I get it. It sucks. It's and closure what for the terrible. kids, man. It's not about ruining Michael Jackson's legacy. It's this kid has to like listen to all these people praise this man who was like raping him when he was seven. You know, like that's gonna fuck somebody up. And, and then that's you also, what it's about. Here's it's the like, thing: when I was watching that, was how fucking retarded are the parents? Yes, the parents were the biggest. Dumb fucks I have ever seen in my life. I noticed things were weird when Michael Jackson would sleep in a hotel and have me stay across town. But I was okay with it. You're a fucking idiot. You are 100%. The parents are to blame. 100%. Sure. They're fucking idiots. I mean, yeah. And the only reason why... To the only reason why they allowed all that shit to happen was because the, the parents wanted spotlight. They wanted right. fame. They wanted to be part of that famous entourage shit. Because he would up. intentionally prey on so they, kids who wanted to be famous who had shitty stage parents. That was so part they had, of his yeah, ploy. So they, the man. stage parents took advantage of their own kids, and then now they're on their kid's side. Like, oh, I can't believe that happened. You knew it was happening. You're a fucking adult. Your kid doesn't know, but you do. Michael Jackson's sleeping with them across town. Maybe he's not doing what, what they said. Maybe. You know, none of, none of us were in that hotel room. Only those two. Or only whoever was in there, and it was mm. one of them's dead and one of them's alive, and one of them gets to speak his story, and you know we don't get another side to it. It's like if Michael Jackson were alive, and this would be like a whole thing. It's a whole different story. Surviving R. Kelly is a whole different story from this leaving Netherlands mm. or Neverland or whatever the fuck. 
because R. Kelly's alive and he's going to pay for what he's done. And, you know, but I, am I one to judge somebody for listening to, you know, music because of who they are? Well, I, because let's be honest. Make your here, own decision on if that. If you were to really decide to not listen to music because of who an artist was, think about all of those old blues artists or rock and roll guys. All of yeah. Elvis like, let's wife. think Elvis Presley. Yeah. Or was she 12 or 13 14? when they got 14 when they got married? 14, Point, and then you got other you have B.B. King, who was fucking 12-year-olds and shit, yeah, and known, uh, 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 known uh, to beat women. Uh, uh, Marvin Gaye. Steven Tyler. Steven married Tyler. Married a, a, like a, thir- a 16-year-old, 17-year-old. Really? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit's real, man. Yeah, I mean, all, all the back in the day, back in like the 50s, 60s, and 70s, that was like normal Anything shit. Anything flew, yeah. Well, uh, John Lennon, John point. Lennon, another perfect example. John Lennon was kind of a douchebag, man. John Lennon, dude. I've, and reading more about he's his one life, of the he's, he's one of considered to be head. one of the best songwriters ever, and people are gonna still support him and listen to him. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's not gonna stop. Well, it's the, not but my that's place that's to tell that's you what the you can and can't do in time. Your own the and time, that's right. Yeah. I, I think that's what it is. And you know, I was I was thinking about while well, I was singing fucking R. Kelly in the in the kitchen the other day. I was singing. Uh, your body's calling for me. You know, I was Dude, singing that cringy like, as fuck now. I it, it really is, <laughs> and it's yeah. funny. It's just, it's just cringy. And so I was singing that, and somebody Ugh. told me like, "Oh, like, do you still listen to R. Kelly?" I was like, "Well, you know, I don't religiously listen to him, but yeah, if I if I feel like listening to one of his songs, I'll put it on. I don't care. Like, it's just good R and B music." And we tried to watch Trapped in the Closet all the time. And way they tell through. me they we tell me that like I, the first I, 20 parts. <laughs> we had to give up. They tell me that I can't listen to it. Like you can't do that. Think about what he's doing to all those people. I'm like, I know what he's doing to all those people. He's <laughs> yeah, your prison dad, for it. your dad called you out in the fucking Facebook group, man. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Dad, you listen to R. Kelly all the time. Why are you talking shit to me now? But so so Steven uh Polito, I believe, he commented on the post. Yeah, Stephen Polito. He says R. Kelly. R. Kelly was was one of the biggest culprits. And um, Vito, your mom. <laughs> Vito's mom is blowing Tim, our spot. Tim up. and Vito's mom wrote paragraphs, so I'm not gonna read them all. Tim, you better watch out. Vito's mom's coming for you as number one super fan. That's right. <laughs> You're gonna be dethroned. If this was MySpace, she'd be clearly number so two. So <laughs> Christine. So Christine goes. I just don't like country music as a general rule. I enjoy art for art's sake. Who the fuck cares about emotional issues or political views? Did a piece move you? I'm going to read the whole thing. Mozart is awesome. I don't care about how or how he thought. His music still holds up. Unlike most country music. I guess if Hitler rocked out, I might not listen. But if he played country music, the world would have split in half out of <laughs> disgust. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Why are you hating on country cool. music so much? You know, That's what I said. Your mom is like, such a stereotype of moms on the internet. Man. I just I said, I it. just said, <laughs> I responded to her, and I said, um, I love good country music, but as you can hear on the show when I talk about it, that there is pop country music that I despise and I hate, and I don't listen to it. But I don't listen to theater or Mozart or any of that shit either. Like classical, there's there's some classicals that I will listen to. I pride myself on being the guy that literally listens to every genre of music. And then she comments back and she says, you know, uh, Vito's classical music description is epic. That's what she says. And then she says that there's an actor that she would like to bitch. Yeah, slap. I got and what. What is what is your mom's Steven Seagal story? Man? Yeah, like, she hates <laughs> Steven Seagal. And she kept telling us. Honestly, ask Vito. honestly, I read that comment. I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to be asked that. I don't fucking remember what she said. <laughs> Why didn't you call her? <sighs> That's true. Get her on the horn. Christine fucking. I guess I should uh, dox uh, her fucking mom. For the radio show. <laughs> and then uh, Tim says he, he fucking hates the, the Eagles. Of course, because they're the so originators random. of butt rock. Every song is boring, cliche, lyrics are lame. Oddly enough, though, almost all of their solo work is way better. Can you name so that makes total an Eagles song that's not Hotel California? No. Yeah, me no. neither. <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen to the Eagles. I was like, I don't share the same hatred for the Eagles that you do, because I just don't listen to them. I didn't choose to. But... I, I, I do agree with him. I don't I don't listen to that. That's how Ara feels about Steve Miller. I like Steve Miller though. But the originators of butt rock. I fucking love that. <laughs> I and, thought Nickelback and, was the originators of butt rock. Yeah. Tim knows Tim no, knows how much I love of butt rock. rock. Oh. 
<laughs> What'd you say? Pussy rock. Apparently, <laughs> hating on Nickelback isn't cool anymore. I was told that. It's not. Year, it, so. It's not trendy nah, anymore. Nah, fuck Nickelback. Thank you. <laughs> no. Way, although, dude. although I okay, so I I got stuck. My sister wanted to go see Nickelback and. Puddle of Mud was opening. Oh my at, uh, god! At Bumber shoot. That's a butt rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, like, I was like, I was like fourteen, so I was like, yeah, dude, Puddle of Mud, I'm down. Like, I'll go see Puddle of Mud. So like, Nickelback plays, and it was cool, like whatever. And they're like, okay, before we do our, our encore, like, let me tell a joke. And this is this is Chad Kroger. This is like, looks like the biggest vagina ever <laughs> when you look at him, right? And he goes, he goes. I just want to tell a joke. So he goes, so, th- so there's this this old man. He likes to go fishing, and he gets himself a trophy wife, right? He's got a bunch of money. And one weekend, he decides he wants to take the family fishing. And he goes, baby, I want to, go, I want to take you fishing, you know, you and, and the kids and, and the dog. And he goes, she goes, I don't want to go. And he goes, well, there's two ways out of it, anal or oral, right? And, you know, we, she gets down and starts sucking his dick. The top pops up a second later and goes, baby, you taste like shit. And he goes, well, the dog didn't want to go neither. Oh, God. <laughs> Holy Damn. shit. That was, that was the joke that Chad Kroger told at this show oh, full of undoubtedly How did an unbelievable yeah. amount of yeah. small children because it's Nickelback. You know, there's yeah. probably a bunch of, like, preteens and, like, <laughs> parents. <laughs> and, like, oh, and then they had a chugging competition, like a beer chugging competition. Dude, they're a rock I'll, and roll I'll, No, no, I'll give them this. I'll give them this. They put on a good show. Like, if, if, if they do nothing else, they put on a decent show. I feel like, you That's know... That's crazy. That's hilarious. That reminds me, like, the opposite effect. When I went to see Bad Religion at the Showbox, and Greg Graffin was talking about how his wife doesn't let him slam dance anymore, and I'm like, how fucking old are you, man? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. No one's called it slam dancing in 20 years. <laughs> slam dance? Yeah. Sounds lame. That's the mosh pit. That's what they used to call it in, like, the early yeah. 80s. Man, I I think I, I, I realized something. I do listen to a lot of hip hop and rap, but I've been to a lot of shows just alone in this year. I've been to so many fucking shows. I don't see myself ever going to, unless it's like my buddy or my friend or somebody that I know personally, or like a group I've been following for a few years. I don't just see myself going to any hip hop show or rap show. That's not like a local rap. You're not going to go see Wu Tang. 36 Chamber 25th anniversary tour. You know, I mean, like, I mean, I wish I could. I, I, mean, I that's wish like, I could. I, I don't really go to. Unfortunately, shows, I like, slept too long on that one and, and it just kind of built up. You know, the, it's fucking pricey. It's not that bad. But, you know, the thing that I noticed I mean, like, about rap concerts. It's, it's not that bad. Like, so I'm sure, okay, Wu Tang, I'd go see him. You know, that's, that's, that's fucking Wu Tang. But I'm talking about, like, any, any other rapper that's not Tech Nine that's mainstream. I, I'm not going to pay to go see them. It's like $150 for fucking tickets to go see these guys. And all they do is they... Man, that's more than I paid to get Maiden. <laughs> they fucking... Dude, they fucking jump around on stage and they have their, their fucking vocal track already recorded that they're rapping over. And artists like Drake, who are as big as they are, they don't even need to perform. They just go up there and they talk. The dogs agree. They go up there and they talk and they, you know, they hype everybody up. But that's all rappers are, glorified hype men. Did you see Drake in the fucking Del Curry Raptors jersey? Yes, I did. <laughs> the fucking we'll talk about Drake. <laughs> did but, you know the NBA told him to tone it the fuck down? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so what I was saying was because I went to a country concert last week, and it's my favorite country band, and they just opened up for Garth Brook, Garth Brooks two weeks ago in the biggest concert in Pittsburgh. Like I think it was like oh. the, the largest, the largest concert in Pittsburgh history was seventy three thousand people. Oh man, it's so big. I mean, well, <laughs> this band literally came out of the. You, woodwork. you ever been to Pittsburgh? They've come out of like the you know they've come it out of the woodwork, there. and so they performed in. I mean, it's called Pittsburgh. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you guys like the it's significance. The yeah. <laughs> significance of this band is they've gone from playing in honky tonks in Texas to opening up for Garth Brooks in big stadiums. Then they played all over Europe and sold out stadiums in Europe. They come back here, they play a notorious theater in Nashville. Then they come to Seattle and they play a max capacity of 320 people bar. Max capacity, 300 people. And they put on the best show I I have seen in a long time. They played for almost three hours. Every song I wanted to hear. Plus they did new songs, cover songs. And they were really interactive. They were pounding beers. 
They were drinking on stage. They were cussing. They were, they were throwing shit out into the crowd. They were having a hoot. But the one thing that I noticed about, like, mainstream rap shows, so it's like if you were to go see, like, you know, Post Malone. Why would I do that? But well, this is just a, like me. it's just a it's <laughs> just like a an example. Glor- I have nothing against Post Malone. I have nothing against him. You but still haven't given me a reason as to glorified, why. Glorified, glorified, <laughs> show. glorified hype man. You know, you go see those guys I mean, like Big Sean, and all they I do don't know. is I mean, yell Post, on stage. Post Malone's a pretty, pretty talented musician. He is. He behind is behind like the the public behind the public image of music and whatever. But I mean, I think a lot of it is just that, like that's what he ends up making. I don't. I don't know. It's but. It's just with the times, like most, like most of what's coming out now, sucks. So yeah. Drake came. Drake came to Seattle. I, mean, I think. I just. I don't see the point of hip hop shows in general. So much of oh, it no, is sorry. so much about uh, like, it's you know, all, you build all your beats on your fucking laptop. How is this interesting live? Like no one's playing a fucking instrument. And, like, and then you got. Well, you a got, lot of guys do tour the live band. Yeah. Do they? Yeah. Tech Nine tours with a live band every so time. So does goes Wiz out. Khalifa, and so does there's there's like a handful. Of, there's there's actually a decent amount of guys that if they're going on like their tour, mm-hmm. right, or they're like a, fe- a featured headliner on a tour or something like that, they'll bring a live band. And that's and they'll see, go that's through like months of rehearsal. Yeah. To like get the beat transferred over to live music. Do they bring in whoever it is they sampled for their hook? Like you know, I, is I fucking mean, Eminem going to perform with Dido? Like. She does, he does all the time. Yeah, I I know in that one example. <laughs> I mean, but you know if a, if an artist is coming with a live band, like a, a rap artist is bringing a live band, that's cool shit. I love it. But if if like a mainstream rapper was coming here, Migos came here on May fifth last year, and somebody I worked with went to go see him. It cost him three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars to sit in the grass section of Auburn Amphitheater to see three dudes on stage. That sucks. Hyping everybody up. <laughs> That's all it is. Why would I do that when I can spend three hundred dollars and go to somewhere like EDC, it, or, or or you know, or hell, even you spend spend three hundred dollars and go to even Paradiso at the Gorge, like like, and see forty artists, yeah, versus one and, group for and an then, hour, yeah, and when, probably and not even an hour, probably forty five minutes, fucking, thirty minutes, forty five minutes, and they pay the same amount of money. That doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Fucking Drake came here. And charged one hundred and fifty dollars for the cheapest ticket. That was the cheapest ticket, and it's like, dude, Fuck Drake. why is anybody doing right. that? Why are people paying for this shit? It's literally glorified hype men on stage. I'm sure you know local talent and small time rappers put their fucking hearts out. But, but if you're is, making as much money as Drake is, he doesn't need to go out there and, and have a show. What it is is it's pop rap, right? The yeah, homie exactly. said some shit the other day. He said it's, it's vegan rap. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, because the reason why I say pop rap vegan is because Drake they're is doing vegan the rap. same thing as pop. Yes. It's purely a business at that yes. point. Yes. Right. It's a business. I mean, that's also how they make their money because Spotify doesn't pay them shit. So, and, you know, Spotify pays pretty tour. well, realistically. They pay, they pay like a tenth of a cent a play, man. That's it's, not what Taylor... Yeah, that's not a lot. <laughs> but when you... Somebody, when you're somebody, when you're somebody like Drake who has, has millions of monthly followers, yeah. right? Yeah, but think of how much money he's making from like just... A single live show. I mean, sure. I mean, my buddy's got ten thousand monthly listeners on Spotify, and he makes mm-hmm. about eighteen hundred bucks a month off of Spotify alone. Mm. I paid I paid twenty five bucks to see Slayer, Lamb of God, Behemoth, and um, uh, some other small time. They're they're like an because there's a very small band. group of people that still want to go see them. It's like twenty five bucks to go see that show, and it, they sold out Wamu, and it was the craziest fucking show I'd ever seen in my life, and. 25 bucks, and I was literally 10 feet away from the stage. And they put on the best show. How much like, did you pay for those Bruno Mars tickets, though? I haven't bought Bruno Mars tickets. I thought you did. No. For the lady. Well, not no, not yet. He hasn't toured here. Oh. I bought, I, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to go see Queen with Adam Lambert in July. We just saw Midland last week, and then I've seen Coulter Wall. We're going to go see Coulter Wall again in August. But anyway, yeah, I mean, I'm going to as many shows. That was my New Year's resolution was go to as many live shows as I possibly can this year. And so far, it's been really it's been it's been going really well. But somebody I definitely want to see again before he croaks is Chris Christopherson because holy shit, that was incredible. Paramount, I've never been to the Paramount for a concert, so I felt special. Um 
but I love I love country music. I love uh, s- southern rock. So I'm gonna go see a s- southern rock band next or this month. But I-, I like live bands better than I like one dude on stage with another dude yelling at you <laughs> <laughs> while his vocal uh. track is playing in the background. It's like sure. fuck. But I love local rap shows. I love it. Well, I think that's different. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it, you know, they, I, I they put their hearts out into it. But anyway, we don't want to get stuck on this topic for yeah, too yeah, long. Yeah. R. Kelly's well, I mean, a no piece one of disagrees shit. with R. you. R. Kelly's a piece thing. of shit, and Michael Jackson's dead. We're, we're moving on. <laughs> Those uh, are both facts. <laughs> both facts. <laughs> this week's podcast is brought to you by the Beefy Boys. Just three cool dudes hanging out, talking about sports, video games, music, and whatever else they feel like. <laughs> Find them at their website www.beefyboys.com Also, we hope you find your other podcasts, iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, you know, all the regulars. The Beefy Boys. The best show on planet Earth. Hi, I'm Renee. And I'm Jess. And And we're the Deerfoot Sisters. Sorry to interrupt, but we have some breaking news. We wanted to let you know that right now, you're actually only listening to the second best podcast on planet Earth. That's right. If you want to check out the world's best podcast, search Deer Feet on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, you know, all the regulars. Deer Feet's a podcast featuring two sisters talking about life and all the kooky things it brings, like rhymes. So when you're done listening to this episode, be sure to check out Deer Feet. Or you can just do it right now. Thanks! All right. What do you want to talk about? Talk, talk about NBA Finals? You want to talk about Kawhi Leonard, best player in the NBA? Kawhi he's Leonard's fucking up. insane. He's blowing up on one leg. He's hobbling around, man. You still can't stop that motherfucker. He's insane. The most humble guy on earth. It's crazy. It's crazy. And Fucking Drake getting right up in Steph Curry's <laughs> face. <laughs> <laughs> so Justin wants to talk about how Golden State's turning into the Patriots of basketball. They're inevitable. They're like well, it's Thanos, just kind of reached, It's just kind of reached the point where I'm just like, I don't give a fuck who wins as long as it's not Golden State. I don't well, watch this basketball. Is be the I don't end. watch this basketball is swan for that song, reason. Man. I don't watch. But you NBA watch football for that. Absolutely. The Patriots have been to the Super Bowl like ten years in a fucking row, man. Football is different. I, I have I have a lot more passion and heart for football than I do for basketball. Yeah, we know. So it's like if I were to see basketball, <laughs> same team winning, I'm like. Wow, why would I ever do that? But see, fuck? that's that's what that's Plus, my Seattle point. Seattle doesn't have a team. Because like so. your argument about why you can't watch basketball is because of the dominance of a single team, which is more of a problem in football than it is in basketball. I so. do think that hockey's a way better sport than basketball. I'm poking holes and in I your it, argument. I think hockey deserves a little bit more recognition than basketball. It's too hockey's too random, man. No way, it's dude. It's too random. Hockey's nuts. You can I mean, lose a series you're because your goalie this, just goes on a slump for three days. Granted, or like, the blues the blues got s- slaughtered. Yesterday in St. Louis, so it doesn't look good. The Bruins beat him seven to one, I think. Yeah. Oh, look, another two. another Boston championship. That's what we need. They're so, gonna go for the fucking sweep. That's I mean, they're one. not gonna get the. That's another, I've gotten there. to the point where I just root against every team <laughs> from Boston. Well, doesn't I matter mean, what sport. If they're from Boston, I want them to lose. You realize the they Black won Hawks the last the Blues Super World Series. The all the time. They I won the World them. Series last fall. Then yeah. they won the Super Bowl. Now they're about to win the Stanley Cup final, which means they're not gonna win the NBA championship, but. I, I think mean, three in a row somebody, is pretty good. Somebody from work... I'm just really tired of Boston. <laughs> somebody from work is from Boston, and he said that they're in a championship drought right now <laughs> of 100 in, like, 70 days. I was like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? <laughs> Get out of here. You didn't reach back and slap him? <laughs> no. I guy might is, have. I was like, you're fucking out of your mind <laughs> saying that. But as as we all know, I've I've said some crazy fucking shit about the Seahawks this year. 13 and 3. I'm sticking to that. So what was the bet? So like what happens if when when you lose? Yeah, so, I know. So th- this bet goes back to the beginning of this year. So everybody kind of wrote the Seahawks off this season, right? Everybody was like, fuck, they're gonna suck. Right. So I had a bet with a with a longtime family friend that said if the Seahawks get ten or more wins or reach the wild card playoffs, right. he's gotta fully detail my car. I'm talking about like shine my rims. He's got to clean the interior. He's got to shine it all up. Okay, and when you lose, and if I lose, I do the same to his. But and, and you know, it's like a full detail. Are you gonna Are you detail. gonna do it yourself or just pay someone to do it? No, I had to do it myself. Oh, Jesus Christ! But it's hilarious because the Seahawks were getting to that point where everybody in in town was like, "Fuck, we're not gonna make the playoffs again." So he wrote me one day. I think it was after oh God, I can't remember who beat the Seahawks. I think it was after the Rams beat them in in Seattle, 
he wrote me and goes, you better get that toothbrush ready. And ever since he, he wrote me that, the Seahawks won five games in a row. Then they lost some stupid game against the Niners that they should have won. And then they, they won out here in Seattle and went to the playoffs. I won the bet. Oh, so this was the bet from last year. Yes, okay. yeah, I won yeah, the bet. I want to know what. I so want to know. He, I want to know this one. The yeah. one that you just made thirteen and three. Yep. What do you What do you have to do when you lose this? Bet? <laughs> I'll be designated driver for him. For how long? Yeah. How many times? Two nights. That's it. That's nothing. Ah. Uh, uh, this is two nights well, of. We either... established that Christian likes to drink, That's so that true. could be difficult. <laughs> yeah. That's true. And you know, the guy I made the the deal with. He loves to drink, and it, it's a responsibility to be uh-huh. DD for these for the for this certain bet. And I'm I'm DD for a whole group of dudes because they're gonna get drunk and go to the casino. And uh. I'm gonna have to just <laughs> sit there and wait. Who goes? And everybody knows everybody knows, hate, everybody knows I hate everybody knows I hate the casino. You but do? I can't Why? drink. Casinos are great. I, well, I, I like it if I if I'm if I'm you know a little bit intoxicated. Mm. I don't care about losing. Yeah, some sitting money. in a casino sober would suck. That's and true. And so I got to do that. <laughs> That's true. I have to sit and wait for them to get out of the casino and then drive them all home. So, oh my god, you remind me. Last time I went over up to the Snoqualmie Casino, I was with my buddy Ernie. <laughs> I'm trying to get him to come on the show, but uh, he was so drunk he kept trying to like splash bets on the craps table after they locked down the bets, and the. <laughs> <laughs> the dealer was getting so mad, she started slapping his hands with the stick, like the dice retrieving stick, every time he would do it. <laughs> He's like, ow! He's like, stop throwing your money in the pile! <laughs> but realistically, uh, Seahawks are going to win 10 games. No, they're going to win seven, all right? At seven? Best. Are you yeah. fucking crazy? Yeah. They play eight games at home. We really don't have to talk Seahawks predictions every week in May, man. <laughs> like nothing has changed since last week. It's June. I still, th- you're right. It's June second. So <laughs> you're we're right. Refreshing our, our Seahawks talk. <laughs> nothing has changed since two weeks ago when I said they were going to win seven that games. I think Football goes. season starts in two months. Yep. <laughs> Six months. Or three Six months. months. You're right. Yeah. Preseason starts in two that's, months. Yeah. That's so. So the season starts yeah. in three months. The preseason means yeah. nothing. Hey, hey, old preseason football, man. So, Means uh, Justin, I heard you had a story for us. <laughs> Which one? One the, of hundreds. The girlfriend. <laughs> one of so, hundreds. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I was dating this chick when I was like 20. I guess I was like 20. And she had to go to like court-ordered rehab, right? Like a month of inpatient or whatever the fuck. And the day out, she goes, she goes we got to go pick up my homegirl tomorrow. So we drive down to like, and we park in this apartment complex, like in the back. And like, I realized that the treatment facility that she had been at was like right next door. It's like right on the other side of the fence. So it's like 6 a.m. Like everybody's by, all the staff members about to show up. And the next thing I know, this little blonde girl comes running out of the building with like a laundry basket and like a bag inside of it. And she like throws the bag over the fence and like, tosses the basket over to the girl that I'm dating at the time and then like hops the fence and gets in my car and we just drive away. <laughs> so fast shit. fast forward ten years, right? Yeah. Um she showed up at my house one night. Uh we hung out and I don't know, she just kinda never left. I mean not like literally she has her own place <laughs> yeah, right. like, but you know what I mean? She's just like I don't stuck know. around. Stuck around. Yeah. Now. Might as well make it a thing at that point. Yeah. That's crazy. That is that is yes. That's you, fucking you did great. not oversell this. <laughs> that's, fucking, that's fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. You can break yeah. her out of fucking. Yeah, yeah. So I broke her out of rehab, rehab. and then oh, no, I mean it gets better. I mean like so so that weekend, I like had to go do. I had to work or something. Something was going on. And I I was like I'm not going to folk life. I'm not. So they so her and the girl that I was dating went down to folk life, and uh, I guess her parents showed up with the cops. And she got arrested, sent back to rehab, or sent somewhere else, or. And then she she ran away again. Like somehow God, I got away again. So the next morning, I get this call from some random number, and I answer. This is why I don't answer phone numbers that I don't know anymore. Is because and then the next thing I know is this good dude's yelling at me like, "Where's my daughter? I know you know where my daughter's at. She was with you yesterday." I was like, "Who are who you? Are who are you? F- <laughs> yeah, who are you? Who the fuck are you talking about? Like, what's going on?" And he goes, "I'm so and so. This is my this this is who my daughter is." And I'm like, "Oh." Okay, yeah, I saw her yesterday, but I'm like, I don't know where, where she's at right now. He's like, I'm going to get the Secret Service. Mind you, her, her parents run political campaigns. 
or Damn. help run political campaigns. Yeah. They did Bill Clinton, they did Obama, they did Hillary. Her dad worked with Nelson Mandela in South Africa. You know what I mean? Like these are politically connected. Yeah. Like so, I get a little shook. I'm on parole and whatnot. So like I'm like, oh fuck, you know, like, I can't have the cops like coming to my house. <laughs> and then I realized I don't have anything in the house and I haven't done anything wrong. And I was just kind of like, yeah. Get fucked. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Send your guys down here. Like, I have no idea where your daughter is. Like, she's not here. Her shit's not here. Like, get the fuck out of here. So, I think her parents know who I am. So, if, but they don't. They don't. They really they remember. The they, they don't. Yeah, they don't really remember quite who I am. Mm. But. Yeah. So when you shake her dad's hand, is it, he, I, he I actually remember. haven't. I've never actually met her dad face to face. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Every time we go to their house, they're like out of town. We use their their penthouse a, a condo downtown as a, like a party spot. It'll I mean, probably not like be a party, like but a, you know, like, like the other day we had like her friend and her friend's boyfriend, and we made food and got shit faced and you know like stuff like that. Yeah, it's fucking rad in downtown. Yeah. yeah, you know, overlooking Elliott Bay. You know, That's fucking you, you know, you know where the Amazon buildings are downtown. Yeah. Like, so you know those two twin towers that are like right. They come out of the same building, but it's two towers that go straight up. They're in the south tower on the Elliott Bay side, on the thirty first floor. Wow, they're nuts. way the fuck up there. That it's terrifying. I walked out on the balcony, turn around, and walk right. Back <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, nope, not That's doing that because it just like sticks out. It's like a slab of concrete it just sticks out yeah. into nothing with like a. Railing. That freaked me out. That scared yeah. me. It's terrifying. You glass, know, glass you know how scared I am too. of heights. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's just because you'd always get me on the horrible. fucking forklift to change the reader board. <laughs> so I'm up on this janky ass, wobbly we fucking would put, like, cage. A, a you stand on a forklift. We would put a basket it's a on basket, the forks, it's like a cage. and you would like, like, like chain the the cage. I don't to think the those fork. are designed for. It. Yeah, no, it's exactly what it's designed <laughs> for. It is. It oh, is. That's really? what it's, 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 it's 100% a personnel basket for a for a forklift. And so you get into this thing, and then you lift up, and you're up like. Mind you, we're not on flat ground. Yeah, so we're like the forklifts at an angle already. So like, so he'd get on the radio and I'd be up top in the reader board, and he's like, "Be careful not to shift too much, man. We could tip." <laughs> I'm like, "Fuck! Why the <laughs> fuck am I up here right now?" Did you put and like funny goofs up there? Because that's to, what they well, do in Belgium. You have to put the stupid jokes up. <laughs> granted, the jokes <laughs> that they have were they were pretty good, and they yeah. They, yeah. they gave us a laugh, but we there had was, to see there it. Was, for... There was one 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 lady called in and like freaked out. It was right after you quit. I, or maybe it was right before. I know I, I was still there. I the, remember exactly she, what it is. She goes, it, the sign said, at what point is it appropriate to tell a highway it's adopted? Right? <laughs> and I guess this lady drove by with her kid. And he was like, what's adopted mean? And she like told him. And he goes, am I adopted? And I guess he was. And like, yep. she hadn't told him. <laughs> and so she got forced into this really awkward conversation with her kid. <laughs> right? Good old and Lumber. so she decided that it was Dun Lumber's fault, and she like called the <laughs> owner and threatened to sue the company if we didn't For take the sign down. What? That's what I said. But they made us change the sign. It was fucking stupid. Yeah, and yeah. you know you'd go up there with a box of like, it, it was like just a ginormous box of letters. If you were smart, you put the letters in there in order. Exactly. So you could just pull them out. And, like, <laughs> <smell> them. <laughs> but if it wasn't, if it wasn't me, Claude, or fucking Justin, run out of E's, you put in backwards threes and shit. Uh huh. Yeah. Like, there, we had some, there was a good core group there. Like, there was a couple other people, you know, like Alex and Dan. Those guys were awesome. And, and then uh, Dave, old Dave. He's still there. He's still there. He's still there. I ran into him at the Channel Marker. And he was there. As, I guess everybody, his son works there, too. But they were trying to poach me back to Green Lake. They were like, come back, man. You, you can make 16 bucks. Oh, I'm like, is that what they're paying now? They're paying, paying 16 dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. I would almost go do that job. For Isn't that minimum wage in Seattle? 15, 15, 15. something. I thought it was, I thought but the it problem was, is, no, is I don't think they, yeah, they've 16, raised it. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah the, fuck that then. <laughs> <laughs> but like compared to the 12.50 they were trying to pay us back yeah. in the day, you know what I mean? <laughs> to go clean up. Yeah. Bum shit. Yeah, and they were trying to get us to clean up human feces <laughs> and shit. Paint uh, over yeah. graffiti that would yeah. get just painted or graffitied over. Like, the day after we yeah, paint it? Yeah. That was the best part. But anyway, you're moving this reader board, and you're trying to get these letters up. And, you know, the forklift didn't go all the way up, so you're reaching with these janky-ass letters, and then they would Jeez. slip out of your hands and just drop. And you just watch it fall, and you're like, fuck, Smash that could be... the top of the forklift that, that I'm could be me. Like, yeah. And then Justin's it's on the... It's double-sided, mind you, so you got to do this twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, the du- and the other... Oh, the geez. side that was, like, the back side was even shittier because that was where the forklift was literally at an angle. Mm. 
yeah, and so that's when like, he's like, don't so rock one, so much, you one, fat piece of shit. One you pull, and so the sign's kind of like straight up and down. There's a sidewalk and there's a fence. You uh-huh. pull on the outside of the fence and do this side. But on this side, it's like on a hill. Uh, right? So we got to pull up like almost under the sign and then raise him up. And so like the forklift's sitting at a slight angle. So if he goes too far this way, we could... You're tipping, boy. dude. You're mm-hmm. tipping. Right? That yeah. thing could easily go over. It's a, it's a little forklift, too. They don't use the big forklifts. Yeah. It's a little tiny. It's a steel cage that literally rocks both the cage and the forklift because the forklift is on an Well, yeah, because it's not, angle. like, tight on the forks yeah. either. It slides on the oh. forks. Oh, <laughs> that's terrifying. No, it was, yeah. th- it was the worst. And then I'd be so nervous and scared. I'm shaking and shit. I'd put, like, a one. Like, instead of putting, like, an I, I'd put, like, a one. And we'd come down, get the cage off. And then all of a sudden, managers call us, and they're like, get back up there and change that one. We're like, what are you talking about? You go back, and then you just see, like, letters, letters, and then, like, a word with one in the middle of it. Like, <laughs> Oops. Oh, fuck. That's funny. And then I we have to go that. up, change it, and I'm d- doing the same routine. <laughs> Shaking, feel like I'm going to fucking puke. You remind me of uh, when I was on the fishing boats, and they had to move me from boat to boat, but they were too lazy to put the basket on the crane, so I would just stand in the crane like you put your foot in the hook and your other foot on top of the hook and you hold on for dear fucking life and hope that the wind doesn't blow too hard Jesus. <laughs> while you're up there swinging around dude if you fuck up on a fishing boat you're fucked yeah i mean I I've, only... I've, I've, I've i've rode the crane like that before most of the time we would just grab the hook and like get swung across oh pff, that's that even crazier <laughs> 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 uh, they put us in the fish basket sometimes too which was just weird because you like being wrapped up in this big net that's designed to carry frozen fish, not yeah. a human. I think the smell alone makes me never want to be a fisherman. The smell? You get used to it. It goes away. No. You, 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 you adapt. You 100% adapt. I'd throw up. I'm, one, I'm terrified of the ocean. You are terrified of the and ocean. Two, that's true. the smell of chum and fish is not my... Well, that, that stuff's not so bad. It's the fish meal that smells the worst. Yeah. It smells like dog food. It, like, when like, we would, well, like fish flakes. When, like, when, it's when, when I lived in Japan and we would go fishing with... Uh, with my stepmom's dad, the we get to the fishing boat. You just smell diesel. It's like four in the morning. You mm-hmm. smell hot diesel, and then you you fucking load up your little chum baskets to mm-hmm. fish. And oh, dude, the smell is so fucking bad. And I, I, you know, I was young, so I'd never been hungover. But now that I'm old Oof. and I know what a hangover feels like, that every single time we Did went fishing. Did you just call yourself old? <laughs> well, I said I'm older now. I mean, when I was fishing in you, Japan, you I was literally 10. said, "Now I'm old." <laughs> well, I was ten years old. When uh, I mean, I was yeah, fishing as opposed to a ten year old. So, I got on a boat once when I was hungover as shit for like a day trip, and between the smell of diesel and the bait, my face literally turned green. It's the only time I've ever seen that happen to anyone. <laughs> uh, I couldn't do it, man. Couldn't do it. It's just life. It the ocean's life too for scary. While, There's man. monsters in that shit. Dude. There's not monsters in the ocean. He was fucking diving in that. I, yeah, he told, I tells me all these stories about scuba diving and shit. Well, you were an underwater welder, Monsters. right? Well, so the way that it works is that, like, there's n- like there's no career as like an underwater welder. Mm. You go and become a commercial diver, right? Right. And the schools only teach you like a basic knowledge. Like I could I could suit up and jump in the water right now and weld a bead. Mm-hmm. But usually you get hired on by a company that specializes in something like that, mm. and then they send you to another school. And you get certified in underwater welding. Mm-hmm. Like just because I can doesn't mean I'm not certified. Like I, I can't see. go and like weld on a pipe underwater mm-hmm. because I'm not certified. Mm-hmm. But if you wanted me to go weld a, a rod to a plate or something like that underwater, I can do that, no problem. It's more just like underwater construction. Yeah, really yeah, 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 yeah. I met some of those guys up in Dutch Harbor when I was a yeah, fake fuck fisherman. that. The guys that go to Alaska and do that shit are fucking crazy. They make a lot of money. <laughs> A yeah, but what, but why go to Alaska where you're still diving like U.S. regulations when you could go to the North Sea and make twice the money? Yeah. And and like and and the guys that are making like the good money are like the sat divers. They live in like pressurized environments, mm-hmm. and like in 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 Alaska they make like fifteen hundred bucks a day, mm-hmm. and in, in the North Sea some of these guys are making like three and four thousand dollars a day. God damn! Right? They work like six months out of a year and they're making like half a million dollars a year. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. wild. It's Scary absolutely thing. wild. Scary. Like, even Damn. the low-level divers are, like, walking around with, like, $20,000 Rolexes on it. <laughs> like, the North Sea divers are, like, a whole different, like, animal of diver. Like, if, 
Like, I met one guy who came down to the Gulf, and he did one job, and he was like, nope, never again, going back to the North Sea. Like, <laughs> like they put you in a tiny little tank, you got to, like, bend over, and like, you're sleeping yeah. in bunk beds. Four guys in a tank that's 10 feet long and six uh-huh. feet wide for a month plus. Right? That's your living quarters. With that sounds people. fucking horrible. Right. Dude. So the North Sea, they have they have boats that are, like, that have, like, environments on them that are, like, the size of small apartments. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they've got, like, like a sleeping room, which is still bunk beds, but it's, like, spread apart. And it's more like a room versus, like, a big tank. Yeah. The ones in the yeah. Gulf look like giant pills. Like, like I had a tunnels. private shower in one of my staterooms. That was the best ever. I didn't have to show shower with those grotty-ass fishermen. So, Vito, you were talking to me about something before we started recording. You were talking about, like, the resale value of, like, a video game. Or, like, not a resale, like, a replay value of a video game. It's more of... I, I So, I thought it was just kind of a cool subject <coughs> that with Woo! the way technology is nowadays and how Bless pr- proliferating video games are on the internet, that, like, you can have a game that shows up in, like, what was it, 2012 or whatever. Right, well... If we're gonna, if we if we want to use Wildlands as, as, Wild an Lands example, as, a, as an example, it came out 2017. 2017 it, with no too, press, no nothing, because the division was also yeah, it, coming it just, out. It just like hung out, right? And then it's like three years later, and all of a sudden it's booming in sales. Yeah. And there there's no like re-release. There was no like news for it. It just word of mouth. People started playing it. Yeah. And so all of a sudden it's like one day. Like, out of just, just being bored, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to play Wildlands again. So I started playing it, but when I'm playing it, I'm getting, like, you know, it's, like, all over Xbox. It's like, oh, Wildlands, flash sale, 15 bucks. You know, all the expansions, 10 bucks. You know, all that shit was, everything was on sale. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And all of a sudden, the game started to get popular. Like, on YouTube, fucking people were putting videos up of Wildlands, talking about it. Then, after a week of it being on flash sale and shit, they announced the sequel. Mm. And people who had played Wildlands absolutely loved the game. I mean, I've beaten it once, and I'm already playing it again to beat it again. But I'm playing it on a harder difficulty, so it's taking me a lot longer. Yeah. See, this is why you're never going to finish Red Dead, man. (laughs) Yeah. I probably never will finish that game. I love it, and I'll play it, but I'm probably never going to finish it. Because online's gonna, you know, really take over. I think in a little bit, still working on it. But once it really comes out, like once online for Red Dead is finished and complete and fully functional and ready to go, that game is gonna come back into, just like you said, they're gonna resurrect that game from where you from know, the Red Dead from the, from the <laughs> Red Dead. And on the topic of resurrecting games, um, I don't know if I don't know if you play Call of Duty. Do you play Call of Duty? Fuck no. See, you're on. You're I'm on all on my own here. On this one, yeah. So they, so they just announced uh, Modern Warfare. They're just calling it Modern Warfare, it's not to be confused with Call of Duty Four Modern Warfare or Modern Warfare Remastered. It's <laughs> this a, is just Modern Warfare. It's a reboot. It's a is reboot it, of the series. It is 100 <laughs> percent because in the series, you know, Modern Warfare was the big storyline driven Call of Duty game. People bought those games for the the campaign, and for the multiplayer. And so, you know, when Black Ops started just going all multiplayer, nobody cared because it's like, cool, this is a good game to just play online. Modern Warfare is all about their storyline. So you have, like, Modern Warfare 1 and 2 where you've really got, like, the story developing, and then Part 3 was just wild. A fucking nuclear bomb blows up in Paris. The U.S. is in shambles because Russia invaded it in Part 2. It's like fucking everything is crazy. And so they, they finished it. It was done. So now they're rebooting the franchise with a whole brand new engine, and now it's under like a whole bunch of controversy. Like, this game has driven like a lot of controversy. Has it? I haven't heard any. What's the controversy? They flew out a whole bunch of video game journalists to see it and play it, and all these video game journalists are just, you know, they're a bunch of fucking sissy boys who get scared when they see graphic shit. And the the developers of Call of Duty were like, this game is going to be... This is our game to stand out more than the rest to be a realistic, gritty, grimy fucking war game. And so th- all the de- all the fucking video game journalists are mad because it it has like do you guys remember the no the no Russian yes. controversy? Yes, People are comparing this game to No Russian the video game. That's what they're calling it. Because there's a lot of civilians in this game and th- you there's a choice. 
There's a, you could kill the civilians on accident because they're all in the way, or civilians getting killed in crossfire gunfights because that shit's real. It happens. All these civilians, you know, when they're fighting in the Middle East, civilians get caught in crossfire all the time. It's it's terrible. It's sad, but it's real. And the and Call of Duty's bringing that into the video game world. Brand new engine. Oh man, the game looks fucking beautiful. Beautiful engine. Well, is it coming out this year? Is it this year's Call of Duty? It's yeah. going to be coming I out. I believe it is October twenty fifth. Mm. And so they they're like, oh, they're like you know multiplayer is going to be huge. It's going to be nice. And they're not bringing out a season pass. They said this is going to be Call of Duty game. They with still no season do that. Pass. Oh, absolutely. Season passes are dead, man. And so. They're taking that out, the but of course everybody's going to get ready for the microtransactions. It's going to happen. So speaking of of release, because Activision dates, is struggling. Did you see the Death Stranding trailer? The ten minute Death Stranding trailer. Anybody? Why no? do I feel like no? that sounds no? familiar? I don't know what that it's is. It's Hideo Kojima's new game, man. Oh, PS With, uh, PS4 exclusive. Fucking Norman Reedus and the yeah, baby right. and all that. I saw that. that game looks oh, fucking yeah. weird. Yeah, it does look weird, but the new trailer looks awesome, and it has a release date. It's coming out this year. The graphics year. are fucking insane. It's pretty right. awesome. Have you seen that shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucking, you know, because they were gonna make the they were gonna make that Silent Hill game. Silent they fucking, Hills. They yeah. scrapped it. I don't well, know. Well, that was the whole Konami and Kojima falling out. Man. That sucks, man, because that game looked awesome. I love a good spooky game. Well, this is what he went to make instead. He, Norman Reedus is in this one too, and yeah. Guillermo del Toro is involved. I mean. That's awesome. Just like Silent Hills was supposed to be. That game, that game looks pretty sweet. It, it I mean, it, it looks, looks a little funky. And they got some weird shit, but that's it's Guillermo a Kojima del Toro game, and man. Kojima. Yeah, that's always you know, weird. Like, it's always weird. I'm excited. I think you know E3's coming up. It and is coming up. Xbox says that they're they're going to announce 14 new titles. Yeah. So I'm that's I'm pretty crazy. excited to see. Are they going to reveal the Xbox Two or whatever they're going to call it? Oh, the what Project Anaconda. Fuck, I can't remember what they're calling the new Xbox. They're calling it Project Anaconda. That's what that's the code name. I'm not making that up. That's what it is. <laughs> well, if that's what it is. Uh, yeah, they're probably gonna. That's a code it. name though. Just like the code name for the Dreamcast was the Katana or whatever, and then they called it the Dreamcast. <laughs> but I'm excited for the it's horrible system. The Dreamcast. I hated the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast Underrated. was shit. I hated it. It's garbage. It's horrible. Was crazy. The VMU. You had a little like Tamagotchi in your controller. Come on. <laughs> the Dreamcast was ahead of its time. <laughs> The only Poorly thing, executed. The only yeah, thing that I remember sure. that was like a standout from the Dreamcast was House of the Dead 2. There you go. Yeah, I get all the fucking. That was that was all. I, that was all. But why would out. I buy a whole system to play that? To, one? to play one play game that you can go to. You can go uh-huh. play at an arcade. Sonic Adventure. Or a movie theater no, with the whale destroying the pier and everything. Come on, come on. That should be my catchphrase. I didn't fuck with <laughs> the Dreamcast. Come on. I didn't fuck with the PSP. I, mean, I had a PSP. PSP is pretty stupid. awesome. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. I like PSP. PSP was the first analog stick. Oh yeah, handheld man. So are nubbin. so. This is a question: Is that technically mobile gaming? It's handheld gaming. Yeah, it's different. But isn't handheld almost the same thing as mobile? No, mobile. No. Is or is mobile just classified as like tablet, phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. something on a mobile network, mo- mo- a mobile device. So uh, if I'm like, is the Nintendo like Switch a, a mobile a mobile tablet. gaming? I mean, yeah. I, I think the difference is it, is the device made for gaming or is it a device that can p- you can put gaming on? Right. Well, plus like y- you can charge forty bucks for a PSP game. You can't charge five dollars for a phone game and get people to play it because they're ridiculous. I mean, yeah, it's absurd. I mean, I think people who spend money on phone games is. A <laughs> that's a You'd rather bit. have like ads and you know. Oh, I ran out of energy in my 10 different fucking currencies. God, mobile gaming. My buddy's wife spent $500 in microtransactions on some fucking stupid oh, mobile game. Oh, that's crazy. Wow. Oh and we were, we, were, we were like in the living room when it hit the bank. Ugh. Oh. Like we were all over there smoking oh, blunt. I'm like, getting out of here. He fucking lost it. It was amazing. It was fucking <laughs> amazing. <laughs> fucking I couldn't imagine. Holy shit. 500 yeah. Five hundred on yeah, fucking goes, phone I game? I didn't know it was actually charging me real money. <laughs> oh, that's my like God. the excuse that seven-year-olds use when they yeah. spend too much on that shit. <laughs> All right. Speaking of games that are coming out, Final Fantasy XIV <laughs> Shadowbringers is coming out at the end of the month. Hey, you want to speak about games that have been around forever? That game's been active since like 2012, and it looks nothing like it did at launch. Yeah, it's fucking amazing. I'm so excited for the next expansion. <sighs> They're getting rid of the fucking. Uh, uh, threat generation like abilities and making you use like actually fun abilities. Really? And now it's just basically a threat aura instead. So then, how? 
That's going to change the way tanking works entirely. Yeah, it's basically going to be how it was last expansion, except you don't have to chain to the threat mm. generation. Because you had two you had two com- combos. There was the threat generation combo and then the DPS combo. Mm-hmm. Now you just do the DPS combo, which is basically what you did last expansion, and you just taunted the shit when it was fucking... Right. You know what always yeah. drives me nuts when my tank complains that I'm doing too much damage and he can't hold hate. I'm like, that's well, you just your, use your job, fucking cool man. So yeah, like, guys, exactly, exactly. When you guys talk Final Fantasy, no, I'm talking about the DPS. The DPS I need, need to use my cooldowns. You have two cooldowns. Get out of here. You yeah, don't fucking take <laughs> you, Your job is to <laughs> make sure the that? enemies it, don't attack if me. You, if they're attacking me, that's your fault. If the DPS takes aggro after I taunt it and start using enmity on it, then they're they're the problem. Uh-huh. Also, use your fucking marking tool so I know the order you want me to kill those fuckers in. Or at least tell me, all right? <laughs> you dude, see, this is, dude, this is why fucking, I can only there's play a, There's shooters. a giant arrow that goes from my character to the enemy that shows you which one I'm attacking. You can also custom mark them to say one, two, three to tell me the order you want to do it in. suck less. Uh-huh. That's always a good This is the problem with fucking pug groups, man. I'm telling you. See, that's why I can only play shooters, man. Is Well, shooters in certain RPGs that involve guns. Um, uh, so there is actually a machine. Yeah, there's a gunner, where you yeah. Shoot people, and it's like, and then there's a, a new new class, a uh, gunbreaker. What are those called? Are they called? They're gun? called M M <laughs> gun sword. MMO. D- don't tell RPGs. them. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> what does that stand it. for? What's the acronym? Yeah, what's it stand for? <laughs> <laughs> Mixed martial uh, onions. <laughs> <laughs> shit. That would be massively multiplayer online mixed, role-playing game. Mixed martial opponents, <laughs> real-life role-playing video game. Look you, at the you spider threw dude. an extra R in there. <laughs> oh, sorry. That probably hit the microphone right. pretty tough. <laughs> We're at an hour, I think. But <laughs> <laughs> wait, we haven't even asked Justin our core questions that we oh, haven't yeah. asked our, our fucking guests in a long time. Sure. Because we usually get too drunk and forget. <laughs> um, so, favorite sports moment. What's your favorite sports moment? Of all time. Of all time? Of all time. Did you not warn him? <laughs> no. <laughs> We're going to do it on the spot. We'll do it live. Um, shit. You want to come back to that question? No. No, no, <laughs> I got it. I got it. The look on Vernon Davis the second time Cam, Chan- Cam Chancellor hit him. Oh. The look on his face when he got up is my all-time favorite sports moment. That's a, like, that's a great Because face. he gets up like literally looking like he has no idea where he's at. <laughs> the look on his face is of just absolute confusion and why am I doing this again? Was that the one where it was illegal, clearly a legal hit? Yeah, 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 and, where he hit they, him going out of bounds. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Okay. Yeah, yeah he rocked I, I knew it was tough. It was I knew brutal. It was tough. That's one of the greatest hits in football yeah, history. But not even the hit. I'm not even talking about I'm talking about just the look, the on, look his, on his face. When they panned to his face and he got up off the ground. <laughs> He's like that chewing is my, on his mouthpiece. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, my God. Man. What the yeah. fuck? He didn't come out and play the rest of that game. Yeah. And then in, and, the, and, and has, and in has, the NFC and championship. And has not been the same player since. You yeah, notice in that? The, in, After that hit, he has not been the same player and has not been able to get it back. He's, he got shook. And that, he was got in hit, got shook. that was in 2012. Then the next season, the 49, you know, they got rid of his ass. 2012, he sucked the 49ers, everywhere else, too. Yeah, 49ers he went to the Super Bowl He has not been the same player. Then they come back to Seattle in 2013, and that was this is back when Kaepernick in that offense was, like, insane. Frank Gore, Kaepernick, Crabtree, those guys were nuts. Didn't Vernon Davis, Vernon Davis come here and, and, and work out for the Seahawks? He recently? did, yeah. Did, did they end up signing him? No, they didn't. No, thank God. I think the Redskins signed him again. Yeah, oh. I think he went back back to his original team. So they came here in 2013, and Vernon Davis was nowhere to be found on that field. <laughs> in the in the conference championship against San Francisco, Vernon Davis was silent. He was on the field, but every time the ball was thrown to him, Cam Chancellor was right there, or waiting for him. Dude, he's the Grim Reaper. I I love Cam Chancellor. I really wish that you know when you when you put your body on the line every single hit you do. And that's, you know, that's Marquise Blair, the new Seahawks guy that they signed from Utah. He puts his body on the line on every hit. He's a hit stick, and that's why he misses so many tackles, and that's why he was picked up later. So probably shouldn't do that then. I mean, but what, well, that's what I was going to say. When he does yeah. hit somebody, that it knocks the no, ball see, loose. But the, difference or, the di- but the big difference is that Cam Chancellor would hit somebody like that, but he didn't miss too many tackles. No, he didn't. 
right? I mean, like he couldn't cover any. He couldn't get the tight ends. He he's never a could safety. get safety. It's not his job. Well, he's a I mean, strong safety. Middle too. of the he's field. Run. Middle of the field should be the safety. He's job. he's strong safety. Like he's run game, and you know, like his run, the, dude. His run defense was just not hit. Richard Sherman and Cam were so fucking good at tackling on run plays. It's nuts. Bobby Wagner, you don't even get me started with Bobby Wagner. I talked. What did What did he go? Did he did he, he went like a hundred and something tackles without missing a tackle last year? Are you year? talking about Bobby? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like a hundred and whatever tackles without missing a tackle is insane. He's the best middle linebacker in the league. Easy. E- yeah, easy money. Luke Keekley or Bobby Wagner? I'm taking so what's, Bobby. What's this next question? You yeah, yeah, yeah. On, you got yeah. questions. For me. <laughs> you got some questions for you. Um, what's your perfect album? Like an album that you've listened to. Over and over and over and over again. Front to back, start. Uh, front front to back, start to finish. Not skipping a single song every time you listen to it. Perfect album. The Marshall Mathers LP. I said that. Did I not say that one too? <laughs> Look I at that you one. Know. You brought it up. Start to finish, over and over and over and over and over. It's again. a perfect album. Yeah, it really is. And um, let's just be clear: the first one, not the second one. Yeah, the second. The one second one's a good second album, one. like. But it's not a great album. That was his second album, right? I don't get the down with the Marshall yeah, Mathers LP. The Marshall Mathers LP was the Slim second. Slim Shady LP and then the Marshall Mathers yeah. yeah. And the Slim Shady's great, That's the, with too. the, like, Vicodin pill on the album yeah. cover all mm-hmm. crunched up. Okay. Yes, I remember that the album. The CD. The CD was a crushed up Vicodin pill. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah that was awesome. That album was yeah, fucking it was a great incredible. Album. Okay. Um, and then your favorite video game. Of all time or currently? All of time. all time. You can do currently too. Yeah, do both. Do both. Uh, my favorite game or game series currently has got to be Just Cause. I don't know something about running around an island and fucking shit I mean, up. You know, yeah. Like, yeah I don't. Okay, it's, <laughs> I I also don't play video games quite like that. You know, totally. like, mm-hmm. I enjoy sitting down and playing an hour or two like every now and then. But mm-hmm. like I, I don't sit down and play daily, and I don't play for long periods of time. When that's what Just Cause is great for. Is like, right. I just want to blow. Like, up I want to go. I want to go blow some shit up for a couple it's hours. It's like Crackdown. Like, uh, you know, like yeah. I play Halo. I can't play online for anything because, like, I, there are almost every game I'll have. Like, I'm going to fucking tether a tank to a hot air, bl- air balloon. Now I have a flying tank. I remember right. That. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. I remember when uh, we were playing Halo in It's your amazing. Basement. Yeah, I, I, I'm good at the campaign. I play, play the campaign, you know, most mm-hmm. games pretty well. God, those Halo like, campaigns are fucking great. Yeah. See, I'm just not, I'm not an online player. Yeah, I can't really do the online shooter thing. Um, and I'd have to say favorite game of all time. Shit, man. Pac-Man. I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the original or Miss? Because Miss is the better one. Um, shit, dude. I, don't... I mean, it's not like a quiz. It's well, it's yeah. not, no, it's just there's just like a lot of. A when lot I was of... a kid, I played a lot of video games. Yeah. Right, and so like when I'm I'm digging like way back into Tyson's Punch Out. Tyson's Punch Out was a great game. If I had to pick a favorite game, and it's probably really good, it's Mortal Kombat. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. The I, original I one? <laughs> that series alone is just a blast. The, the PS2 version, right? Well, yeah. Like the yeah. original Sega Genesis Super Nintendo version? I really or? enjoyed that version. No, the, the, the one that I'm talking about is the PS2 version, the, whatever the uh, Apocalypse or whatever oh, the fuck yeah. it was. Oh, okay. Where, you know, where they started ripping people's spines yeah. out again and, like, uh-huh. you know, like... Parents were furious because they bought this game that they were used to seeing. It's just like a fighting so game, and like M- now Mortal Kombat is the reason that video games are rated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, dude. The new <laughs> ones are so fucking great. You know who is it? Oh it was my Sub Zero punches like freezes you, freezes the dude, punches them, rips their spine out of their yeah. body. Yeah. He like r- rips your head off and then throws it at your body. And then they have right. those like <laughs> right. they have like those right. special That's... like in the new games they have those special combats. Or, or special combos. The fatalities. That when you... Yeah. Not, not well, the fatalities, x-ray moves. You but, like, while moves? you're in yeah. mid-fight where you, like, do some crazy combo, and it turns into, like, a cinematic, like, x-ray vision. Yeah. And he, like, punches as he, like, uppercuts oh, this dude yeah. in the nutsack, and it blows his balls up. And they, <laughs> How many they ribs just continue can this guy fighting. break in one battle? They just know? continue fighting. It's like, oh, okay, I just my testicles just exploded. The newest one just came <laughs> out. Did you play it at all? No, I haven't played it yet. I but haven't it, played any of them. It looks fun. No, yeah. Those games are always fun. I played I, the, I like... the DC version, Injustice, which is basically the same fighting style. Right. Without the fatalities. Now <laughs> they've added so many fucking characters. You got, like, all the classic horror movie guys, like Freddy yeah. Krueger, Jason, and Leatherface. I know. It's like Smash, but for horror. It's Smash. Fighters. It's Smash for... 
for fantasy and horror. Horror smash. Horror huh? smash. Horror you smash. gotta get figure out how to stream smash so I can crush you guys. <laughs> Dude, you don't want to see me on that or on smash. Why? Dude, I'm you're the, bad. I'm the king. Bullshit. King smash. Who do, who's your player? Uh, fuck. If I if I'm not going cheap and going Kirby, I'm going Bowser. Yeah, you're gonna get crushed, man. <laughs> no, Bowser fucks shit up. Or uh, Roy. Or, yeah, see, or all your characters are too slow, all of them. Martina Roy. You can't keep Roy. up with Zero Suit Samus, man. She's too fast. Nah, She's too fast. Dude, Bowser. No way. No way. You hurry here first. All right. <laughs> are we anyway, ready, are we ready I think, to wrap? Yeah, I think we've, I think we've overstayed our welcome in this living room here. I'm, I'm, about, sti- I'm about fusing to this chair. <laughs> you <laughs> are gotta, slowly gotta leaning further and further and further back. That's Thank you true. for joining us, folks. It's been an absolute blast. We love you. Joe, I'm going to let you hit the outro just because you need the intro. All right. Word. Uh, yeah, this is the outro, I guess. <laughs> See you another Justin, next thank you week. for joining yeah. us, man. We fucking, yeah. It's great. Love the stories, dude. Good times. Great good times. times. Good times. Yeah, hit us up. on. Let us know if Sublime is the ska band. Early returns from Facebook say, what the fuck are you guys talking Everyone about? Sublime is band, definitely dude. not a ska band. So. And that was... <laughs> I, I realized that was time. last episode, but whatever. We recorded these at the same time. <gasps> Shocking. All right. Let's get out of here. Later. Later.